Hey guys and girls, so ODEX6, uh, Origin Mutants are invisible, so that does make life a little difficult on this map. Uh, what is quite simple map becomes difficult with orig uh, with invisible Origin Mutants. So, to counteract that, uh, I'll be bringing Sukinogi. as you can see she's just E1 level 20, so she's nothing too special. Um, I really only boosted her up to E1 literally before this recording. Uh, and that's because I wanted her full range and her skill 1. So, nothing too special. Uh, she's not there for damage, she's literally there for her skill alone. If you just want to leave her at E1 level 1, go for it. Uh, I have got her skill at level 7 though, so bear that one in mind. Two vanguards, we have scavenger and beanstalk, scavenger skill 2, beanstalk skill 1, beanstalk is a ranged vanguard. Two tanks, gummy Cora. I've got tanky tanks because I would prefer to not get belted by any origin mutants that do manage to get to them. I at least need them to take two hits. Two, uh, two healers, it doesn't matter what flavor they are. I have got Gaviol because she is a bit more resilient and she will be in the middle of a sandstorm. As for Perfuma, it, again, you can replace her with a single target if you like. It doesn't really matter. Uh, Pinecone, who you've seen frequently through my videos of this event. So she'll be in with skill one. Uh, Vigna with skill two, so a single block Vanguard. I have Lancet because I will be at maximum deploy the whole damn time. Uh, except at the start, obviously. So I would like another healer. Vermeil and Ethan rounds it out both with skill two. Uh, the reason I'm using Lancet over Thermite, who you guys probably realize that I may usually bring. Um, essentially, the entire central area is going to be loaded up with, if not operators, then bombs. So there's no, there's not going to be anywhere to put Ethan. Uh, not Ethan, sorry. Thermite. So we're going to deploy Beanstalk here, facing up. Now... To start off with, pretty much up until, I should say that most things, because there are a few that are the exception, spiders are the exception, uh, the two left lanes will cycle across to the right, and the two right lanes will cycle across to the left, and all four of these snipers will walk in an orderly fashion, one by one, around clockwise to that exit there. So don't panic too much. Um, but we do need to get those snipers down before we can start placing bombs in more open spots. So we're going to start off with Beanstalk and her crab. And then we're going to deploy Scavenger, left or right, doesn't matter. So at the moment, everything's going to be cycling across Scavenger. So don't panic too much. Here comes our first sniper, so we're not going to worry about that too much. Uh, we are going to be saving up for a healer. And we're going to be saving up for a second healer just here, so both of the healers facing inwards. Doesn't matter if... I do prefer, and I kind of want to point this out at this bad point in time, I'm using Perfuma because I will be placing Vigna in behind her, so the AoE healer can hit behind. Um, you don't need it if you have an especially tough Vigna, but... Or, I mean, if you're using someone like, say, Bagpipe. Uh, Bagpipe will go through that, no dramas. So, Vermeil here, facing across. So, as you can see, my little crab is about to get the raw end of that deal. We're going to pop in uh, Pinecone just here facing up. Use that skill. Yep, cool. My little crab just collected that, which is great. So my crab's got another full health pool to work on that. It's probably not super ideal, but we are where we are. Vigna here. Yeah. 
Skill again, Tsukinogi here facing up to make use of that extra range I was talking about. I'll cycle Vigna's skill as soon as it's ready. So I think my little crab is going to lose that fight. Yes, it has. <laughs> so, here are these spiders I was talking about. They go straight down. They do not cross over the center line. So from here, we're going to pull out our two vanguards and we're going to cycle in our tanks. Vigna's skill has cycled at a fantastic time, so we don't need to worry about too much there. First bomb in. This enemy has next to no health left, so obviously Beanstalk has done what I needed it to do, even though it got away. If you can keep this enemy on Beanstalk's little crab, though, all the better for you. So, say, if you had your Beanstalk, like most of my operators, I kind of level up to level 45, E245, and I leave them. Um, if yours is around that level, that will probably walk away quite comfortably. So once this last guy is gone, we can pull Vigna out. Uh, at the moment, as you can see, we have our next lot of swarm tactics. This is where we are probably going to need to start using some of Beanstalk's skills. It's kind of where her skill one shines. So the regular enemies will continue to walk across, cycle across the center, and these spiders will just come directly down. So I'll use Vigna's skill because I really want to get Ethan in at this point. I'll use Vermal's skill as well. So that's it. Once that snipe is dead, we don't need anything there, and I'll cycle in Ethan. Uh, we can now start placing bombs somewhere else like in the way of the sandstorm because all the snipers are dead so they're not going to kill them. Now this particular part up to 40 of 60 is where we need to have the damage down. You cannot delay this part because the longer the sandstorm goes, as you can see this last, these last three blocks are... I mean I'm doing quite well for damage but the longer you leave it the longer these blocks are going to be getting damaged and then you're going to start losing this block. Um, and you do not want that block to break. So there goes the sandstorm. I don't believe that sandstorm is on a timer. <laughs> so we can put our uh, lens 2 in. So here come the Originutants. Uh, I'm going to pop in another bomb just up here. And you'll notice I've got one left. So here comes the next storm from the top to the bottom. And that's why I say that you don't want this uh, dirt mound to get damaged. Because at this point in time, the last thing you want is your healers being reduced. Yeah. Uh, your tanks are obviously getting buffeted, so that is what it is. Your tanks are there to block enemies, they're not there to do damage. And our last bomb will be going either here or here. It doesn't matter which of these two you want. Uh, it's entirely up to you. Uh, if you left side, uh, I'm thinking of the word. Left or right, it doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> so what we want to do is we basically, once again, everything is going to swap sides except for these spiders. So once again, we're just sort of getting swarmed. So again, beanstalk, fantastic. Ah, uh, not beanstalk, sorry, pinecone, fantastic. So we're sort of going to leave this as long as we can. We really want to wait until the second lot of these Origin Newtons come out before we hit Tsukinobi's skill. So here they come now. I'll use Ethan's skill because again, we really want to delay. In comes the next bomb. I'm going to blow this one up. Pinecone skill. Use a healer skill. Pinecone skill again. So now 
we are really just looking at where the origin Newtons are. That's what you're going to be doing. Because as you can see, especially with Ethan, the positioning of these origin Newtons will change. They will never be exactly the same, simply because of how Ethan's skill works. Um, I tend to find that the ones on the, that come in from the left come through first. That seems to be the tendency, so just bear that in mind while you're going through this. So, the next bomb I'm going to blow up is going to be this one here on the right. So I'm going to blow that one up. And then I'm going to blow this one up. I'm going to use Pinecone skill because I don't know what the hell is in the middle here. And everything now is gone. Everything is dead. I don't have to worry about anything else. What is on the field is what is on the field now. Um, and I still have two bombs to spare. So that is, you need to play this last part by ear. I can't give you a guide in this particular aspect because I can't tell you exactly where these enemies are going to be. Uh, you can just blow these up if you really want. <laughs> Doesn't really matter. So that's it. Um, it's at the end it's really just paying attention to where those origin newtons are because Sukunogi's brought them out of their invisible state so it's just make sure you know which of those bombs is going to hit as many of the origin newtons at once because you really want to make sure that none of them actually hit your tanks more than twice because anything that hits a tank more than twice is probably going to kill it on the third hit probably depending on which healer you've got topping them up like for example, if you're not using Gavil, you're using uh, Suzuro. Suzuro skill 2, that skill will obviously cycle a hell of a lot quicker than they can damage. So, if one gets to a tank, Suzuro probably can keep it alive. But, the thing to keep in mind is that there's still going to be a lot of swarmage coming down through there. So, while that tank is sitting there getting in the face, you're probably still going to have spiders and shit coming through. Spawning dozens of other little things. It's just, it's going to be a mess. So just do your best to sort of keep on top of where those original Newtons are and blow the bombs up. When there's prob ideally two, when you're ideally going to hit two, preferably three. Well, preferably two, ideally three, I should say. Uh, I don't think you'll ever be able to get all four, but... Stranger things have happened. Maybe you get super lucky with Ethan and Ethan just keeps them stun locked in the middle. Um, love life and yeah, that's it. So I hope that helps guys. I'm sorry I needed such a niche unit to get through this, but it was a, it was a better way of getting through it without bringing in a six star. I had contemplated bringing through Ifrit, but uh, simply bringing in Sukinogi even at a low level helped. I mean, if you've got Tsukinogi where she can actually do damage as well, then yeah, I mean, that's going to benefit you in a hell of a lot. Uh, it's going to benefit you a hell of a lot better than it has benefited me. So yeah, if it has helped guys like subscribe, they do help, uh, helps me grow my little tiny baby channel and, uh, head over to my Twitch and check that out as well. I don't really stream a lot of Ark Knights, but um, sometimes I do. So check that out because, yeah, as I said, I'm a little baby streamer at the moment and every every like, every subscription, every follow, they all help me out. So thanks a lot, guys, and I hope to see you for the next video.